जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज गोपी जाना बाला गिरी बरधारी गोपी जन्ना भाल्लाप गिरी बरधारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज Yasodhanandana Braja Janara Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Tunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balava Girivaradha Jaya Gopi Jana Vallava Giri Vardhari Jaya 
ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರಾವಲ ಯಮುನ ತೀರಾವಲ ಜೈ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಗೋಪಿನಥ ರಾಧ ಗೋಪಿನಥ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸುಂದರ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸುಂದರ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಲರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಲರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಲರಾಮ ಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬಲರಾಮ ಜಯ ಗೌರಾಯ 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 ಜಯ ಗೌರಾಯ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು 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 ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ತಾಮಿನಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದಶ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬೇದ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಾಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶಿವ ಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ I would like to request that when you clap your hands, don't clap too loud. They did some study that a very loud clapping is louder than the thundering sound of an airplane. Which means that if you clap like this all the time, very soon you will be deaf. No, seriously. <clears throat> it's better you chant loud than clapping louder. Okay? We don't do this in Vrindavan. And if someone is clapping like this near me, I will stop him immediately. Because it's very... If you're going to want to last long, 
with your ears because of all the senses, the most important is the tongue and the ears. Because it's how we chant and how we hear. So don't, if you're going to clap, clap very softly. It's not that the louder you clap, the better. No. The louder you clap, the quicker you'll become deaf. Now seriously, this is not good for the ears. Okay? I did not stop you because I think you are in ecstasy. So, just as a warning. Hmm? It's like, especially, you know, the clap like really loud. Hare Krishna. No more Hare Bol, Hare Bol. <laughs> so we're going to be reading from the fourth chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is the chapter that gives us description of the Lord's appearance, the confidential reasons for the Lord's appearance. Very, very uh, important to know and it's very difficult to understand. We can just like trying to reach the moon but we cannot do it. But somehow we can just appreciate especially in our conditioned state not so easy. Um, as we mentioned earlier or yesterday that the foundational book knowledge we get the knowledge from is the Bhagavad Gita talks about Krishna being the Supreme Lord who is God and then the Srimad Bhagavatam explains the Lord's Leela along with his eternal associates and then the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which explains about the mind of the Lord. What is it that the Lord is thinking of? That's very difficult to understand. We will not be able to understand. But according to Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, which he based the Chaitanya Charitamrita from the diary of Sarup Damodar, will be able to have a little glimpse of what is the Lord thinking. It's very difficult to understand our own mind what to say of the Supreme Lord. It's beyond our reach. Is not possible. So we will read, and as we read, we will make comments from Srila Prabhupada's purports, and uh, in that way, we'll try to go deeper. <clears throat> jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda. Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Brinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda I just told you not too loud, right? <laughs> you became used to it. 
maybe you don't hear anymore. Or you cannot hear anymore because of the loud clapping. <laughs> the Lord's appearance. Hmm? Was that? Janma karma chame debyam evam yobiti tatpata chakba deham punar janma na iti mam iti sarjuna. The appearance of the Lord and His activities, Janma, Karma, Chame, Divyam, they are transcendental, they are divine. And anyone who can understand who can understand up to a certain degree, then one does not have to take birth again. Chakba deham punar janma. Na iti mam iti sarjuna. He does not have to come back to this material world. Upon leaving his body, he'll go back to this spiritual world. The Lord's different expansions are unlimited and the immediate expansion of the Supreme Lord is Lord Balaram. Now, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram also appeared 5,500 years ago as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nichananda. Hmm? According to the scripture, says, Brajendra Nandana ye sachisuta hoilo se Balaram hoilo nitai. The same Lord Krishna came 500 years ago as a son of Mother Sachi. And Lord Balaram also appeared 500 years ago as Lord Nichananda. So the more we know Lord Krishna, from whom, from where? From the spiritual master? Hmm? from the sadhus, learned sages, realized souls, and ultimately from the scriptures, sastra, guru, sadhu, and sastra. They are saying the same thing. It's not that one will say in a different way. Um, they all have concluded the same Tattva, the same truth. And ultimately, the main prana, praman, praman, evidence, is the sastra. So the more we come closer to Lord Krishna, the more we will know about Him. How do, how, how do we get closer to Krishna? The more we get closer to Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, by reading the scriptures, by associating with the devotees, we get closer and closer and closer to Lord Krishna. Whenever the devotees of the Supreme Lord congregate or associate with each other, there is only one reason to glorify the name, fame, form, qualities, and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada gave an example, it's like the business people, the businessmen, they will meet in a hotel, hmm? and they will eat non-veg, drinking alcohol, and what they will do, they will only talk about business, how to make money. Yeah. So devotees of the Lord, we also congregate to hear about the Supreme Lord, name, fame, form, qualities, and pastimes. We chant together and we take prasadam together. So in this way, we get closer and closer to Krishna. The nature of the spiritual world is very difficult to understand, especially to those who are contaminated the conditioned souls. Jai si si rukmini dwarkadish ki jai si jaganat baladev subhadra ki jai. Si si gornitai ki jai. 
You have Govardhan Shila there, right? Giri Govardhan K. The energies of the Supreme Lord also are unlimited. And we mentioned yesterday that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, He is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Specifically, Shimati Radharani. She is the Hiladini Shakti, the pleasure giving potency of the Supreme Lord. Her love towards Krishna is unparalleled. You cannot be equal to or greater than anybody else. Mm. He's so pure that he's able to control Krishna. How many qualities Shimati Radharani has? 25 qualities and especially the one that quality that, con that controls Krishna the most is her restless eyes. Her eyes is compared to a doe, a deer, moving back and forth, back and forth. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came in the mood of Shimati Radharani specifically to show us the love that Shimati Radharani is having towards Lord Krishna. The Lord himself <clears throat> not be able to fully understand himself. He wanted to taste the sweetness of the conjugal love between himself and Radharani. He came also, these confidential reasons now, the three main confidential reasons. Even though he's always fully satisfied, hmm, fully satisfied, but still, he says that he expanded himself into unlimited jivas. We all came from Lord Krishna, right? We are fragmental parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita it says, Was that Mamai Vamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana? We're all eternal, full of knowledge and bliss, but we became covered up having come in contact with the material energy. It's like a raindrop that touched the ground, it becomes muddied. But the eternal associates of the Supreme Lord, they cannot be covered up by the modes of material nature. They can be covered up by yoga maya. There are two mayas, Mahamaya and yoga maya. In the material world, the covering energy, the Shakti, covering energy, the Shakti is a Maya Shakti. And what are they? The three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Now in the spiritual world, Chinmaya, Ras, they also covered up to see Lord Krishna, especially, well, in Goloka Vrindavan. The devotees there, Krishna doesn't feel as much satisfaction if he is being worshipped as God. No. He would rather be considered to be subordinate by his devotees, like the cowherd boys, they will be on the shoulder of Lord Krishna, riding on the shoulder of Lord Krishna when they play. They will consider Lord Krishna as equal with them. Hmm? 
Mother, uh, mother Yasodha, she will hold a stick, but she will not also scold Krishna in that way. How can one do that to God? In any religion, you will not find the same understanding theology like the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Uh, in Vaikuntha, they will worship Lord Narayan hmm, with awe and reverence. They will bow down to him. But in Goloka Bindavan, no one bows to Krishna. You heard? You heard? Of course not. Mother Yasoda will not bow down to Krishna or Nanda Maharaj. How about the gopis? They will not bow down to Krishna. Instead, in a sulky mood, they will chastise Krishna. Lalita and Visaka will even stop Lord Krishna from coming to see Radharani when he is late for the meeting. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to show us and to tell us that the highest level of love that one can be having with Lord Krishna are the Prajabhasis. The Prajabhasis. That's why he says, yes, we should follow in the footsteps of the Prajabhasis. So we're very fortunate. Somehow, we are in this Sampradaya, Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya, that teaches us to follow in the footsteps of the Prajabhasis. Now, how to follow in the footsteps of the Prajabhasis? Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed us. Hmm. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed us, especially in the service attitude. That's why Lord Krishna, he sent Uddhava to Vrindavan. Because Uddhava is a jnani, jnana bhakta. So he wanted to find out also how, how, how is this love that the Brajabhasis are having towards Lord Krishna. What is it? So he had an idea. And especially when he met, Uddhava met the gopis. The gopis were was telling, they were telling Uddhava that better don't talk about Krishna. Because I'm sure he's already enjoying with the queens in Dwarka. No, no. We don't want to hear anything about him. Do we have to follow like that? No, of course not. But this is their love. This is their love towards Lord Krishna. They say that, okay, we don't want to hear about him, but actually they want to hear about him. It's like Rupa Goswami says, don't go to Vamshibat. If you're still attached with your family, friends, and loved ones, don't go to Vamshibat. Because over there, you will see this bluish black boy holding a flute with a peacock feather on his head. And you will forget everything. So don't go there. So, do we have to follow that? He's saying it the opposite, right? He's saying the opposite. Actually, we should go there. So, and Uddhava, Uddhava, he resembled Lord Krishna. Just like when he first arrived, they thought that Lord Krishna returned. He also has the same complexion, bluish black co collar. He wears the same dhoti, color of dhoti. 
The only thing missing is the peacock feather and the srivatsa and the kostuva. And when he heard Simati Radharani's, like so much in ecstasy and the love that Simati Radharani has uh, is called Mahababa. And she was talking to a honeybee, to a bee. She said, Who, you, you are a servant. Your, your, your master is not very good. Look at you. You just go here and there and just pick up the nectar. And then you will go away after taking the nectar. See, we're talking about this because we don't talk about this every day. But it just happened that we, if we want to know the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is the mood of Srimati Radharani. Okay? It's not, it's not possible to talk about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's confidential reasons why he appeared 500 years ago without talking about Srimati Radharani. Because the whole chapter is about the love of Srimati Radharani towards Lord Krishna. And three purposes for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's descent coming confidentially. Number one, to relish the position of Shimati Radharani, who is the prime reciprocator of transcendental love of Krishna. Lord Krishna is the reservoir of transcendental loving transactions with Shimati Radharani. No one can surpass her love. She is the, says here, reciprocator. The love of the gopis depends on the beauty of Lord Krishna. When they see Lord Krishna's beauty, their happiness increase and their beauty increases also now when Lord Krishna sees the gopis beauty increases his love also increases his ecstasy increases more but you know who is there's a transcendental competition here There's a transcendental competition. Like you see a person you love, for you, that person looks more beautiful, increases the beauty. So your love for that person also increases. So reciprocally, both the gopis, they're having a competition. And you know who is the victorious here? The gopis, and you know how much, how mu magnified 10 million times. And what to say uh, when Krishna sees Radharani? Their beauty, their, their excitement. Um, yeah, it says in the, in the spiritual world, there are two types of loving relationship with Lord Krishna. Swakiya and Parakiya. Swakiya means that marriage which is lawful marriage. And there is this paramour or unlawful relationship illicit in such a way it's only in the mind that actually Radharani was married to Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu is also an expansion of Lord Krishna, like a shadow. Because who can be married with Radharani? Who can be the lover of Radharani? Only Krishna. Hmm? So when 
Krishna sees Radharani's beauty, he becomes happy. His beauty increases. But then when Radharani sees the beauty of Krishna increases, her beauty also increases. So this is going on and on and on and on. And this is in Parakya. Parakya is higher according to the Sastra, according to the Sastra, because there is the risk. The risk is, there is a risk there that enhance the relationship higher and higher. Hmm? Is, let's say like, like a thief is trying to steal somebody's bead bag. <laughs> because it's nice bead bag, right? Nice painting and all these things. Uh, there is some excitement there. He will take the risk. And that risk heighten up the intensity of trying to get that bid bag. So similarly, it's just a crude example. Don't do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so in the spiritual world, it is like this. Of course, in the spiritual world, there is no Abhimanyu. Only in the material world. Because some of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, along with his eternal associates, uh, is Nitya Lila. And there is Naimitika Lila. Naimitika means occasional. It happens in the material world, but it doesn't happen in the spiritual world. It happens in the spiritual world, it also happens here. There is no lifting of Govardhan Hill in the spiritual world. Because there is no Indra there. Yeah? And there is only here. So, this love, the subject of those loving transaction, transactions is the Lord Himself. And Radharani is the object. Thus, the subject, the Lord, wanted to relish the loving mellow in the position of the object Radharani. What is it that Radharani is experiencing what is that love that Radharani has towards himself, Krishna? Krishna cannot understand this. It says Krishna is the original name of God. And the meaning of Krishna is all attractive. Yeah? That's the meaning. Prabhupada says that. Krishna means all attractive. Now, Krishna attracts Cupid. Cupid, he's the one who will shoot an arrow between the boy and the girl and that way they will become attracted to each other. Cupid. During Valentine's Day, he's very famous. <laughs> they, will, they will give gifts to each other and usually it's always color red. Because that's passion. So Madan Mohan, that's another name for Krishna, Madan Mohan. But Radharani's name is what? Madan Mohan Mohini. He who, uh, she who attracts the attractor of Cupid. So how much Radharani is great? Huh? So this loving mellow of the object. That means Radharani. She is the object. And Lord Krishna, He is the one who is the um, reservoir of transcendental um, love. But then, even though He's, we've heard that book. What's that book? Reservoir of Pleasure. Yes? That small pamphlet, Krishna, the reservoir of pleasure. But still, <laughs> he's not able to understand Radharani's love. That's one of the confidential reasons. The second reason is that to understand the transcendental mellow experience or taste of himself, 
Lord Krishna is all sweetness. Hmm. As Srila Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness is like a, what do you call this? Um, simply wonderful. Right? It's sweet on the top, sweet in the middle, and sweet everywhere. All sweetness. Hmm. Madhurya. Radharani's attraction for Krishna is sublime and to experience that attraction and understand the transcendental sweetness of himself, he accepted the mentality of Radharani. So we can have a glimpse now. It's like when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he arrived in Jagannath Puri and he went inside the temple of Jagannath Puri. How many of you have been to inside Jagannath Temple? Okay. I also went inside. <laughs> but I did not faint like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> I went inside when I was a brahmachari. I went inside with some devotees from uh, Mayapur. And we did, went inside like the night. There is a night darshan, right? Less people, less crowd. And I changed my cloth into white. Because if you're an ISKCON devotee and you're brahmachari, they can tell, hey, he's from ISKCON. Because ISKCON devotees, brahmacharis, they always have nice, neatly, uh, new dhoti and kurta. <laughs> So, so they can tell, uh, you know, Gaudiya, Brahmacharis, Gaudiya, Vaishnav, no, they don't, they don't have that paka clothes. So I went inside and it was so amazing. Um, I don't know, I don't think I will try it again. Because if they found out that you're not Hindu, uh, they will chase you away. But when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, his effulgence lit up the whole temple. When you go inside, there is no light, isn't it? No, and no electric bulb. It was so difficult. Maybe there is just one bulb, but very faint. Especially the inner sanctum of the altar of Jagannath Baladeva and Subhadra. Very difficult to see. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he immediately faint. He is Krishna himself and he's seeing Jagannath. How is that? That he fainted because in the mood of Simati Radharani. Having seen her beloved for such a long time and for the first time. First time he came to Jagannath Puri. So, in this way, Lord Krishna accepted the mentali mentality of Rad Radharani to understand the transcendental sweetness of himself. He is completely under the love of Simati Radharani that he himself, his sweetness he cannot understand. Text 50. Ataiba se baba angi karakari sadilena nija bancha gauranga shihari. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya, who is Sri Hari himself, accepted the sentiments of Radha and thus fulfilled his own desires. part of the purport we, we explain about the Swakiya and Parakiya. Expert analysts have decided that the transcendental ecstasy of the Parakiya mellow is better because it is more enthusiastic. This phase of conjugal love is found in those who have surrendered to the Lord in intense love. Knowing well that such illicit love 
with a paramour is not morally approved in society. The risk involved in such love of Godhead make these emotions superior to the relationship in which such risk is not involved. The valid validity of such risk, however, is possible only in the transcendental realm. Swakya and Parikya, conjugal love of Godhead, have no existence in the material world. Prabhupada says, you cannot find love in this world. The closest resemblance of love in the material world is the love of the mother towards the son or the child. I remember my mother told me once, uh, you just don't know what it feels like to be a mother. Mother, they are the greatest. Their love, especially towards the child. Whatever they will eat, and if the child is hungry, they will give to the child. Of course, males, we don't have any idea what is mother like, to be like a mother. The mother, they can. Huh? Especially oh, if we haven't seen our mother for a long time. Hmm? How much emotional we become. So, love cannot be found in the material world. It is not possible. That's why he says here, this Swaki and Parikya have no existence in the material world. Parakia is not e exhibited anywhere in Vaikuntha. No, it's not. It is only existing in that portion of Goloka Vrindava known as Braj. Because in Goloka Vrindavan also is divided one side is where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his eternal associates perform their leela. And on the other side is where Lord Krishna, along with his eternal associates, perform their pastimes. There is a an expansion of Lord Krishna's associates that perform pastimes along with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. Side by side, they're doing their lila. The Sankirtan, congregational chanting of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also the same as the Rasa Lila of Lord Krishna along with his eternal associate, the gopis. So when you're engaged in Sankirtan, Yagya, Book distribution, you are also being like in the Rasalila dance of the Lord. When you are in chanting, engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord out there to distribute the holy name to everyone, that is also resembling the Rasalila. And for that matter, the whole process that we are doing is that someday, if we become qualified, then we will also be able to join Lord Krishna. This is the uniqueness of our Sampradaya, to join the Supreme Lord in Goloka. Some devotees think that Krishna is eternally the enjoyer in Goloka Vrindavan, but only sometimes comes to the platform of Braj to enjoy Parakya Ras. The six Goswamis of Vrindavan, however, have explained that Krishna's pastimes in Braj are eternal, like his other activities in Goloka Vrindavan. Vraj is a confidential part of Goloka Vrindavan. Krishna exhibited his Braj pastimes 
on the surface of this world and similar pastimes are eternally exhibited in Vraj, in Goloka, Vrindavan, where Parakya Ras is ever existent. In the third chapter of this epic, Srila Krishnadas Kabiraj Goswami has explicitly accepted the fact that Krishna appears in this material world at the end of the Dwapara age, at the 28th Chatur Yuga of Vaishvashvatamanu, and brings him his Brajadham, which is the eternal abode of his highest pastimes. So whenever Lord Krishna will come to the material world, uh, the Brajadam, the Boma Vrindavan, is eternally existing also here in the material world. Sometimes manifest, sometimes unmanifest. So whenever he will come, he will also, uh, send his eternal associates first. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yasoda, the other elderly cowherd maidens and the other cowherd men, elderly cowherd men. The Prabhupada gave an example just like in the movie uh, in Bollywood for example. I hope you don't watch Bollywood movies, huh? Uh, the settings will be there first. Yeah, and then the other supporting actors and actresses they will be there. Yeah, Amogalila knows. He do, he do, they do a lot of, uh, they do a lot of plays. And then the main actor will come. He doesn't come immediately. It's like you know, sometimes even in the middle of the film he will come. But then there is also a closing, ending of the story. So when Lord Krishna comes, this is his pastimes. All of his eternal associates. Raj will come. Hmm? Everything will be arranged by Purnamasi, Yogamaya, personified also. Of course, we've heard Subhadra also as Yogamaya personified. They'll arrange everything, the setting, which trees will be here, which birds will be there, which animals will be here. Everything will be set. Then Lord Krishna will come. So this is Braj, it's confidential part of Goloka. Hmm. As the Lord appears by his own internal potency, so he also brings his paraphernalia by the same internal potency without extraneous help. It is further stated here in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that the Parikya sentiment exists only in the transcendental realm uh, and nowhere else. The highest form of ecstasy can exist only in the most confidential part of the transcendental world, but the causeless mercy of the Lord, we can have a peep into that invisible brudge. The transcendental mellow relished by the gopis in brudge is super excellency featured in Shimati Radharani. Matured assimilation of the transcendental humor of conjugal love is represented by Shimati Radharani, whose feelings are incomprehensible even to the Lord Himself. He cannot figure it out. That what makes Krishna God complete. According to Srila Ji Bhagaswami, this inconceivable nature of the Lord. For others, we say, oh, how can he be God? He cannot understand himself. But this is what makes Krishna completely Purna Bhagavan. This inconceivable, achintya, nature of the Lord makes Krishna God himself. This is the explanation of Sila Jiva Goswami. Hmm? One may say, hey, Krishna, he knows everything. How come he doesn't know this one? What is that love of Radharani? That makes it more intimate. If he knows everything, which he knows everything, 
But seemingly he doesn't know it. Then we don't have Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming to propagate the Sankirtan Yagya. So two things accomplished here. Seemingly he does not know and also at the same time to propagate the Yuga Dharma. This highest form, the transcendental mellow, the intensity of her loving service is the highest form of ecstasy. Therefore, the Lord himself agreed to assume the position of Radharani in the form of Lord Sri Gauranga. He then relished the highest position of Parakya Ras as exhibited in the transcendental abode of Braj. Hmm. The third reason that Lord Chaitanya appeared was to enjoy the bliss tasted by Radharani. What is it that Radharani is tasting with that love? The Lord thought that undoubtedly Radharani enjoyed his company and he enjoyed the company of Radharani. But the exchange of transcendental mellow between the spiritual couple was more pleasing to Shimati Radharani than to Sri Krishna. Radharani felt more transcendental pleasure in the company of Krishna than he could understand without taking her position. I repeat that one. Radharani felt more transcendental pleasure in the company of Krishna than he could understand without taking her position. But for Sri Krishna to enjoy in the position of Shimati Radharani was impossible because that position was completely foreign to him. Again, that loving sentiment that Shimati Radharani, the pleasure that she derives being in the company of Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna himself not able to understand. There is divine, in the Krishna book, in the introduction, uh, when you see the Krishna book, the original printing of the Krishna book, the silver color, Radha and Krishna is there, right? But the title is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not just Krishna, because without Radharani, there is no Krishna. And without Krishna, there is no Radharani. There is this one great Vaishnava Acharya. I think it was Raghunath Das Goswami. He says that if Radharani, if Krishna is there and Radharani is there, I will not go there. They say Vrindavan, Krishna and Vrindavan, they're together. You cannot separate Vrindavan and Krishna. But if Radharani is not in Vrindavan, I will not go there. <laughs> it's not complete. <clears throat> Krishna is a transcendental male and Radharani is a transcendental female. Therefore, to know the transcendental pleasure of loving Krishna, Lord Krishna himself appears as Lord Chaitanya accepting the emotions and bodily luster of Shimati Radharani. Srila Prabhupada's introduction to the Chaitanya Charita Rita chapter 3. So in the, in the introduction of that book, Krishna book, who is this female besides Krishna? Krishna is a Supreme Lord and Simati Radharani, she is the eternal counterpart. She is the female God. She is the female God. Because we always think, oh, God is man. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. But God also is female. Both. 
male and female. Hmm. So, there's so many things. We just read one verse, and there is, this is one of the longest also. There's so many pages here. But at least we touch upon, because it's very difficult to understand this. We have to purify our senses first, but today is a special day. And tomorrow also, at least we touch upon the confidential reasons or the internal reasons why Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. How do we purify ourselves more and more? By chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I can keep on reading, but it is beyond my comprehension also to explain and to understand. I have to purify more and more myself. I'm not in that category qualified. We can just repeat, as Prabhupada says, we can just repeat what we've read. Some, they want to jump immediately in that part of Srimad Bhagavatam where the Rasa Lila is being described. This is called Sahajas. What is a Sahaja? A sahaja means he takes things very cheaply. Huh? How can you expect to have a child? You just get married. You want child the next day? It's not possible. Right? Prabhupada says it'll take time. If the male is potent and the female is potent, then they'll be able to conceive a child. But it'll take time. We cannot, we cannot do it so fast to understand the subject matter without following Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Vaidhi sadhana bhakti means following the rules and regulations in the beginning. We cannot be a doctor immediately. We have to go to kindergarten or pre-kindergarten. Kindergarten, then grade one, elementary. Yeah? And be careful. Be careful of to whom you hear this subject matters. Because in Vrindavan, this is a daily activities for everyone there to hear. The most billboard that you may see is in Vrindavan advertising this person doing kata, this person doing kata. Many are doing katas, but few are genuine. Many are not. They're there, professional katakars. They're only there for money. Hmm? They become a profession. I I'm sorry to say, I'm going to tell you something which in the pa past few years or months, there is this one personality who became very famous. And this personality is wearing yellow and all of his followers are also wearing yellow. He is along the Parikrama Mark. The kata will start at 2 o'clock in the, in the morning. So some of our members will go there first and then they will come for Mangalarti. They want to hear him first. But I'm sorry to say he is number one Mayavadi. We, will, we, we were hearing his so-called kata. Kata is only hari kata. Okay. And he was saying that we are the same as Narayan. We are one with Narayan when we become realized. 
is complete and this is very dangerous Prabhupada warned us not to hear from those kind of personalities it's like very flowery words flowery huh? sounds good oh very talking about Radha Krishna but then there will come a time that he will say that you and I were no difference and we are no difference with Narayan this is dangerous to hear such personalities very soon you also become a Mayavadi and Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra is Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine So I, I, I'm warning you if you know anyone who goes there and if you're going there also when you come to Vrindavan your life, spiritual life is in danger Don't go Don't go you're like playing with fire. You'll get burnt. Okay? I'm not going to mention any names, but I know that you know. <laughs> Who is that personality? I'm sorry. I have to, I have to tell you this now. I, because, you know, I'm here and uh, I, I have this opportunity if you know some of your friends who are going there, oh boy, tell them. That's why Srila Prabhupada says, don't go outside of the four walls of Krishna Balaram Mandir when it comes to hearing. We go also to different Lila Stalis, Radha Krishna Lila Stalis, that's fine. We should go to purify us. You go to Terkadam, you go to Govardhan, Radhakund, Shamakund, Varsana, Nandagram, that's fine. But when it comes to hearing, and this is the first duty, the first duty of a person who comes or arrives in Vrindavan is to hear from sadhu. But genuine sadhu. There's a lot of sadhus there in Vrindavan, they have this kind of tilak. They have, you know, like one dot tilak, different kinds of tilaks. There is one so-called Paramahamsa, and he made up his own tilak like this. <laughs> and uh, you know what? His, his uh, followers worshipping him with Tulsi and Chandan unto his, not lotus feet, to his feet. And he accepts. And he will copy Prabhupada's quotes. He will, he will cut, cut and paste. Cut and paste. From Prabhupada's books. So people who will hear, oh, he's very self-realized. But he will not give the reference where he is getting his quotes from. From Prabhupada's books only. So beware, okay? When you go to Vrindavan, you go to a bookstore, like in uh, Louis Bazaar. There's a big store there. All the books, translations of the Goswamis. Uh, be careful also what you read. Don't read too many books. Read Prabhupada's books. It's so much. It, it, it takes 11 years to study Srila Prabhupada's books, all of his books. And then after that, read them again. Okay? If you go to this bookstore, you're, you're just like a, a boy going to a candy store. So many varieties of sweets. But some of them are not really sweet. Some of them, if you, if you read and there is no purport, then you get become a mental speculator. So it's not proper. This is the highest. Prabhupada gave us the highest.
We didn't. We only read one verse, and it's very difficult to understand. We need to read the books under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, under a pure devotee, Shila Prabhupada, and his disciples, and the future spiritual masters in ISKCON. Okay? So we stop here. Is there any points, any questions? Any want to say? Some remarks? You first. You, you wrote, yes. You raise your hands. Is there a Bhakta mic? Give it to him. Whoever is the fastest there. Hare Krishna devotees, just one disclaimer before anybody asks any question. In your question, you are not supposed to take anyone's name. Yeah. Okay? You can ask indicatively. Like I did. Just like Maharaj did. <laughs> indicatively, Maharaj told everything. So, similarly, do not take anybody's name. Okay? Because there are people who want to uh, they, they relish controversies. So, although I, we also enjoy it, but we, should, <laughs> but we should avoid it as much as possible, right? So, nobody should ask any question quote, quoting anybody's name. Otherwise, you can discuss any principle. Why is that you can discuss? Maharaj told very important information for all of us. So, you can ask, but not any name. Only Siddhanta or Apsiddhanta. Okay. He's got, he has his hands raised first over there. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the wonderful lecture. Uh, my question is, you mentioned about Swaki and Prakia. And uh, uh, I just want to ask, like, uh, you said, like, there is no Abhimanyu in the Golok. And how... Yes, there is no demons there. So, how does this Prakia relation exist, actually? Like, when there is no one in... in it's only group? in their mind that they are married. Okay. Only in their mind. Okay. All in the mind can be there, but actually is not real. You understood? All right. It's right there. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for this trans. Hare Krishna oh, Maharaj. Maharaj, thank Hare you for Krishna. this transcendental lecture. Prabhuji, I have one doubt that uh, though, oh sorry, Maharaj, I have one Slowly doubt. Slowly <laughs> and clearly. Okay. okay. Uh, Maharaji, I have one doubt that though uh, Krishna is all knower, uh, he is omniscient. But yes. how is it possible that he cannot understand Radharani's love? And yes, you have answered this already with Jiva Goswami's statement, but still, uh, it's still unclear to me. I uh, cannot uh, understand it. Because of maybe mode of ignorance within me. Not maybe. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's 101% sure. Um, Prabhupada says, don't try to understand Krishna. Try to love Krishna. We just accept what the Sastra says, what the Acharya says. Okay, don't try to understand Krishna. But you have to read Bhagavad Gita. You have to read Srimad Bhagavatam. You have to read Chaitanya Charitamrita. But we try to just try to develop our love, our faith, and just follow in the footsteps of the Brajabhasis. For the Brajabhasis, they don't, they don't care whether Krishna is God or not. You know what they, they always wanted to do? To serve Krishna. This we should do, okay? Understanding Krishna is not as important as loving Krishna. That's what I'm trying to say. And in your, you're not even in pre-kindergarten right now. You're just like a baby just came out of the womb of your mother. You don't know anything. Zero. Nothing. So, read, associate with the devotees and chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And take a lot of prasad. 
that will purify you. Okay? This one here. You have a question? There's a mic right there. Raja Raja sir. How equally... Uh, what did you say first? Radhe Radhe. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, how equally uh, in uh, married life, uh, married life, and uh, as like uh, say this, it in Hindi. Say it, say it in Hindi, and he, someone can translate. Okay. Say Sir, it in Hindi. कैसे मतलब कि अगर ग्रीष्म आश्रम में भी इंसान है और अगर आप ये से ये सर लोग हैं या हैं तो एक समान भक्ति कैसे आप तो करें? Translation. No purport. Okay. Who can translate? <laughs> Amoga Leela Prabhu? Kya, kya hum in ki tarah apne grist life mein rahe ke hum bhakti prapt kar sakte hain? By being in household life, can we practice bhakti just like other sincere devotees? I was asked the same, like a question yesterday. What is the chance of the grihasta going back home, back to Godhead? And my reply is 100%. So how you become sincere? Follow the process. Whatever Srila Prabhupada has told us to do, we should do it without deviation. We should do it wholeheartedly, sincerely. Everything is in Prabhupada's books. Okay? Start reading and chanting. Okay, over there, come closer. Come closer before the microphone comes to you. Oh, right there. Hare Krishna, my love. Stand up. <laughs> this is like a classroom. You have to stand up. Hare Krishna, my love. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your wonderful session. My question is, uh, like, are the all people in the Vrindavan are Vaishnavas? If yes, then... Um, Which Vrindavan? Near Delhi or yeah, in Vrindavan over there? In near in the Delhi. World? In material world. W are they all devotees? It, yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of sampradayas are going on these days. Yeah. So are they Vaishnavas? If yes, and uh, how to make ourselves away from committing any Vaishnava prat against them? Because oh, okay, okay, okay. Because if, I, if we are uh, making our families uh, aware of these things, okay. so we are committing directly or indirectly yeah. Vaishnava. Very Bhattas. good question. <laughs> Sign of intelligence, good question. Not everyone in Vrindavan is a devotee. No, many are non-devotees. But somehow, by great fortune, they are in Vrindavan. Many come to Vrindavan. Not everyone there is a Brajabasi, first of all. Because a genuine Brajabasi means he's always thinking of Krishna 24 hours. Many are there for many, many reasons. To make money, number one. To find a wife, to find a husband. For position, many, many. So not everyone there is a Vaishnava. But we have to give them respect. Everyone. As Prabhupada says, even if you see a Mayavadi sannyasi, you should offer respects. Because of the Paramatma is there. We don't offer obeisances to the person but the Paramatma. This is when we say, Banchakal Patarubhyasya, because also Paramatma is there and the soul is there. So be careful. Brajabhasis, those who live there, so called. To be a Brajabhasi means you have to take birth in Vrindavan, live in Vrindavan. You may have come from somewhere else. That's a Brajabhasi also after some time. And if you die in Vrindavan, I guarantee you should go back to Godhead also. That is most important. 
So that is the potency of Vrindavan. Hmm? But you don't go to Goloka. That is special. And if you commit sinful activities in Vrindavan, you're more likely you'll take birth uh, in a lower species of life in Vrindavan. Like a pig or a monkey or a dog. Prabhupada says that in the fifth canto, uh, one of the purports in the fifth canto. Everything that we do in Vrindavan is magnified so much. Performing bhakti in Vrindavan, magnified so much. Thousand times, a hundred times. But to do sinful activities also magnified so much. So we be careful. The safest is always in the association of ISKCON devotees. You'll save. But even amongst ISKCON devotees, we have to be careful also because different levels. Try to associate with a devotee who is more advanced than you. So not all devotees are on the same level, even amongst devotees. So be careful. You go to Vrindavan, you be, be, be careful. You don't go alone and then you think that you'll find Krishna yourself. You need a guide in Vrindavan. Otherwise, Maya also is present in Vrindavan. Huh? It's like before entering Vrindavan on the side road, there's a liquor store. Maybe that's one of the, uh, I don't know. It's like it's a liquor store in Vrindavan? In, uh, was that Yogi Aditya? Yogi, yeah? I don't know. Yeah, he stopped meat eating near Mathura. It's banned. But people are still eating meat. Be careful, okay? Anything else? Oh, I cannot. Okay, yes, over there, Mataji's side. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Bol. Thank you. For oh, you're the same who asked question yesterday, right? Okay. Thank you for the beautiful lecture. Mira Prashne ki agar guru or shastra alag bole to hume kiski baat sunni chahiye? If guru and words of shastra are not matching, then whose words should be listened to? Guru or shastra? They will never be different. The guru will on, always repeat the shastra. But ultimately, the main source of evidence is the Sastra. But they will never be different. If the Guru says different than what the Sastra says, he's not a Guru, he's a Gauru. <laughs> okay? They only repeat what they've learned and what they've heard. It's like a messenger, messenger or mailman, Prabhupada says, a peon. He does not subtract anything and he doesn't add anything to the delivery. I hope the Amazon people don't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hare Krishna you were telling that in this material world, there is no love. But I love my family, then what I have to do? No, what's that again? Uh -huh. that, love, that love is genuine. Okay. But our relationship is temporary also. So that is not really genuine love. Love only pertains to Krishna. And Krishna also loves us, we also love Krishna. That we have to develop. 
Krishna always loves us even if we don't love him. This is Krishna. So we have to reciprocate to him through our spiritual master. We show our love to Krishna through our spiritual master. He gave his life to us, the spiritual master. So we should reciprocate, give our life to Guru. The mother, not all the time also, Kali Yuga. How many times we've heard the mother will leave the child, abandon the child near the garbage? You've heard of that? Yes or no? Yes. So that is not real love, isn't it? There is resemblance, but very minute, not 101%. You have another question there? These children are very intelligent. <laughs> like mother, like child, right? Like daughter. Okay, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. Um, why does Krishna send his, send his associate before coming to... The material world? Yes. So that everyone, everything will be ready. So that everything will be right. If he comes and then Mother Yasoda will come later, <laughs> then there is no birth of Lord Krishna. <laughs> right? There is no birth. Mother, father comes first before the child. Okay? Shall we stop here now? Sri yes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, okay? Yeah. Si Si Rukmini Dwarka Desh Ke Jai Jagannat Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ke Si Si Gaur Nithai Ke Dai Gaur Sitanath Pramanande Hari 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 Bol Shila Prabhupada Ke Jai His Holiness Bhakti Anugraha Janardhan Swami Maharaj Ji Ki Jai So Maharaj in very easy words Maharaj explained to us that what are the internal reasons of Lord Shri Krishna coming as Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So all the out of humbleness Maharaj was saying that I have not understood this. But yes Maharaj is staying in Vrindavan. That shows that yes, he is so very close to Srimati Radha Rani. So that's why we requested Maharaj and Maharaj kindly agreed to come to bless us with his association. So yesterday and today we had such uh, nectar learning from Maharaj. And tomorrow is going to be Gaur Purnima lecture, very special lecture, again by His Holiness Bhakti, Anugraha Janardhan Swami Maharaj. So yesterday and today we had more of Siddhanta, but maybe tomorrow we'll get to hear some Leela. pastimes. Leela of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. So very, very sweet pastimes of his appearance, his childhood pastimes, there are many. And again, they would appear even more sweet because they would come from the glorious mouth of His Holiness Bhakti Anugraha Janardhan Swami Maharaj. Arivo! Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Krishna Prasadam ki jai.